Yes, this is a follow up of the video. It cut off at the end while I was talking. And what I was saying is, this is very important for you, for all of us knowing that as I studied different religions and different forms of spirituality or religions or organizations and groups and those are the words that they use and I'm not really that smart so I need to say that first of all I was talking with some witnesses outside sometime this week and um I was explaining to them I am a mental health patient from being abused and molested and all different types of crazy situations have happened to me, you know? And my birth certificate says my name is Brandon. So, you know, the name Brandon is what my birth certificate says. There's an A on it. It's like a Brandon, R Brandon, A Brandon. You know, different people say it different. Some people be like, hey, a Brandon. Hey, R Brandon. Some people be like, hey, Brandon. You know, most people say Brandon, though. Um, some people say, hey, you seem to know a lot about the Bible and religion and stuff like that. And it was some people that wanted me being a fake preacher or a fake pastor, some kind of junior pastor or pastor's assistant. They wanted me preaching or teaching a fake, false gospel, which leads people to a place to where they say forever and ever and ever and ever for all of eternity that you would have to sing praises to someone's name, a place where you would have to sing praises to someone's name. And some of the stories said that you would fall down on your faces, that they would fall down on their faces and worship forever and ever and ever and give praise to a name, to a name. And I was told you wouldn't want to go to a place like that. You wouldn't want to go to a place to where forever and ever you would have to sing praises to a name. Because studying different religions and books and, and you know, being in different meetings with different people, they say that, you know, my God is my God. A name is a name. A book is a book. A Bible is a Bible. A Quran is a Quran. But my God is my God. They say every person who believes in the Bible would have to tell the truth the same way every person who believes in the Quran or any book would have to tell the truth that a book is a book, whether it's the Bible, whether it's the Quran, whether it's a Kabbalah or a Talmud or a Torah, no matter what name of those different books, a book is a book. My God is my God. 
They say, if Judgment Day came and everyone was ordered to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, God is not a book. And if you had to put your faith in a book, or you had to put your faith in God, would you put your faith in a book, or would you put your faith in your God? They asked me the same question, those witnesses, and I said, my faith is for my God. They say a book is a tool, you know, T-O-O-L, a tool. And that those books have stories about men and women and males and females and spirits. And most of those spirits are bad spirits and examples of what not to do. And most of those are examples of what not to be. When they talked about the Ten Commandments and stuff like that, most of the commandments were thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And I was taught that, see, those books are teaching you about what not to do. But they say that some people did not learn that way. And they named their children and named them family members after the people of those books. Even though the same book said most of those people did what they were told not to do. Those people were examples of if you learn from someone else's mistake, then you won't make the same mistake if you learned from the mistakes others made. Some people say you learn from your mistakes. But some people say, why make those mistakes if other people already made those mistakes? And you have a Bible and a Quran and all of these different books about the mistakes that other people made when they did stuff that God told them not to do. Why make those mistakes yourself and learn from your mistakes if you can learn from the mistakes of those that came before you? You know, they say you can learn from the mistakes that other people already made so that you do not have to make those same mistakes that other people already made. They say it makes more sense learning from the mistakes other people made and not making the same mistakes instead of making the same mistakes and learning from your own mistakes if someone already made those mistakes before and you see the mistakes they made, then there is no point for you to make the same mistakes if you can learn from the mistakes others have already made. That is what I was told. And they say that is what the Bible and the Quran and most of those books are about. It is about people who made mistakes and they wrote books about people who made mistakes so that you can learn from those mistakes so that you would not have to make those same mistakes. But they say a lot of people made a great mistake. The great mistake that they say a lot of people made is they named themselves after the people of the book 
and they patterned themselves after the people of the book. And the main people that they named themselves after was the people who made the greatest mistakes. That is what they say. So once again, I'm not that smart. I was telling a female about this the other day. She said, but you seem to know a lot about the Bible and you seem to be able to speak very well. And I told her, I have a memory. Going to school, they would teach us to memorize stuff. They would say, these are your vocabulary words so that you would have a vocabulary. And they would say, look up these definitions and memorize them. And I'm going to give you a quiz on Thursday or Friday. And you're not going to be able to use the book. And you'll have to remember what the answers are. Some of the children or some of the people would have a cheat sheet because sometimes you don't know the answers. You just memorize what you were told or you memorize what you read or you memorize what you heard. And that's what I do. A lot, you know, it's my memory. I'm not that smart, so I don't really know because, you know, just because something is in a book or because someone writes something down or because someone says something does not mean that it is true. An example is growing up, they told me, and it was in a book, that a man named Santa Claus wore a suit and would come down the chimney on Christmas night. Most houses don't even have chimneys these days. And I stayed in an apartment a lot and they don't even have a chimney. I learned then that just because something is in a book or there's a story about it, it does not mean that it is true. When I growed up, you know, I don't really celebrate holidays, but one time someone was like, you should buy toys for the children and Christmas and stuff like that because when the other children get toys and you don't buy toys because you don't celebrate holidays, what if the children feel bad about all of the other children having toys and since you don't celebrate holidays and you don't have any toys, what if your children feel bad, or Brandon? And so, you know, I learned then that, wait a minute, even though they told us that Santa Claus comes down the chimney on Christmas and brings toys, and even though they told us it was in a book because there are storybooks and children's books about Santa Claus, just because something is in a book or just because a person tells you a story and just because you hear what a person said it doesn't mean that it is true because I had to go to the store and buy those toys myself. And then growing up as a child, I learned, you know, that looking back on it, you might see something you did not see before. When I go to the mental health doctors and I go to like River Edge is a, Mental Health Center in Macon, Georgia, the state of Georgia, in the city of Macon. A lot of times, you know, some people understand and some people don't, and you have to explain sometimes that most of the stuff that I say is from my memory. I have a lot of memories because I am 39 years old according to my birth certificate. So I have 39 years worth of memory of hearing a lot, seeing a lot, and reading and studying a lot of people, 
places and ideas about the world, life, gospels, church, gods, and religions, you know, because different people have different types of gods that they call God, you know. So I'm saying all of these so that, you know, that I am a mental health patient and I'm not that smart. And everything that I am saying is something that I heard or something I was told, you know, something from my memory, you know, a memory of what I heard, a memory of what I was told, a memory of what was typed or written in a book, a memory of what, as a witness, I see with my eyes a memory of what I hear with my ears, you know, a memory of what I feel when those actions happened, you know. So I'm not really that smart. But you don't have to be a smart person to have a memory because a lot of people that I talk to have similar memories of being told the same stuff about a similar place. A place where forever and ever you would sing praises to a name. A place where forever and ever, they say for all eternity, you would sing praises and praise a name. Some people say, well, what if I get tired of singing? What if I want to go to sleep? Or what if I want to do what I want to do? Nope. You would have to sing praises to a name forever and ever. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that either. If that's what it is, singing praises to a name forever and ever, I don't want to go to a place like that. A place where you would sing praises to a name forever and ever. And it was like, well, what kind of place would, 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 would you think is, 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 is a better place? A place where no one is punishing me. A place where no one is forcing me to sing praises to a name forever and ever and ever. A place where I would not be burning in a lake of fire. You know, a place like that. A place where no one would be mentally, emotionally, physically, or sexually abusing me. You know, by saying that they had sex with my wife or actually having sex with my wife when they are not her husband. A place where a person or people or beings would not be abusing me by stealing my family or my children or my friends away from me and making me feel weird about where they are or who they are or what happened. You know, a place like that where I would not have those types of struggles or those types of challenges or those types of worries about the safety or well-being of my loved ones. You know, a place like that. And others seem to feel the same way that a place of those types of You know, those types of places seem like a better place than a place to where you would forever and ever have to sing praises to a name. And it seemed like something was wrong when I studied the different religions about that particular place, because since God is God, And since a book is a book, 
And since a man is a man, they say that's called idol worship. They say an idol is an object, you know, an item, a thing. They say an idol can be a person, place, or thing, or stuff. If you make it more important than God, you know. And the way that they explain it is that you just draw a line down the middle of a piece of paper, you know. There was there was there was the person one time who told me, he said, you can do anything with paper. You can do anything with paper. So it's like it was like you can take a piece of paper and fold it in half. And you can draw a line down the middle of a piece of paper. On one side of the paper, write down the word God. You know, whatever your God is, you don't have to use a name. Whatever you think God is, you know, if you think God is, you know, our father, you know, and in order to be our father, you know, there would be a mother. I went to a breakfast yesterday and I heard someone saying that, you know, it was, it looked like it appeared to be a female and she was saying the same thing. She was like, you know, they always talk about our father in heaven, our father in heaven, our father in heaven. But in order for our father being our father, there has to be a mother, a mother of the children of God, because a father, you know, is only a father when there is a child. Because in order to have children, you know, it starts with one. There has to be a child first, and you have a child, and then when you have another child, it's called children, more than one. And so, since many people believe that there is a such family that they say are the children of God, the children more than one, children of God, the children have a father and a mother is what I was told. And the way it was explained to me is feminine energy, the energy of a female, and they say it's called femininity. So I'm not that smart. That is why I keep saying they say. And that is why I am a witness of what they say. And they say this is kind of like community service and and volunteer work if no one is making me do this. So this is evidence of the love that I have for all who can see and hear and have access to these videos. And according to the internet, they say the whole world has access because it's on the World Wide Web is what they say. So they say femininity has to come from somewhere. Feminine energy has to come from somewhere. And they say it does. Femininity and feminine energy comes from the female mother. The, you know, the way that they say our father a heavenly father, our father in heaven. Well, a way of saying where the feminine energy comes from is our mother, our heavenly mother in heaven. And some people say that God, 
is our heavenly parents. You know, our God parents is God or our God parents are God and that God is the source as a heavenly father, our father, where male energy comes from, you know, and they say it's called masculinity or being masculine, the energy of a male. And they say God is the source, you know, as our heavenly mother, where the female energy comes from, you know, being feminine, the feminine energy. And they say it's called femininity. So I'm not that smart. So you may need to study, but it's what they say. To me, being a witness of what they say, you know. So they say our fam, F-A-M, is our father and mother, fam, F-A-M. And they say our fam is where feminine and masculine F-A-M, feminine and masculine, energy comes from, you know, and that some people say that my God is my parents, not our birth parents, the names that a birth certificate says, no, no. The birth givers are not our heavenly parents. The birth givers are not our heavenly mother or our heavenly father. When it says children obey your parents, the parents that they are talking about the way I was told is our heavenly father and our heavenly mother doing what God wants us to do. And I am a witness of that because growing up, sometimes your birth parents, the name that a birth certificate says is your mother or father. Sometimes grown people told children to go places with grown people that were having sex with children. God would not tell us to do that. So those are not the right parents. Sometimes the name that a birth certificate says is your mother or your father told children to do stuff. And the stuff that they told the children to do was stuff that God would not want them doing. So those are not the right kinds of parents. They say The Bible is an example of different spirits. And as a witness, I'll talk about it. They say there is a such thing as self-defense. You know, if a child was being abused and a grown person was beating up a baby, you know, if a grown person was beating up a child, the child has a right to self-defense. If a grown person just kept hitting a child with a belt and kept hitting a child with a belt and that child pushed that grown person, whether she said she was his grandmother or any of that, or whether she said she was her grandmother or her big mom or his big mom or whatever, if she fell down the steps and broke her neck and died, they say it is not murder. It is self-defense because a grown person was abusing a child and kept hitting them with a belt or kept hitting them with her hand or her fist or kept hitting them with a stick. I am a witness to those types of situations because growing up, grown people would pick up sticks off the ground and they would call them switches and they would say they were giving children a 
brick whipping or punishing them for being bad. And they would hit the children with sticks and belts and they called it punishment or giving them whippings or discipline and stuff like that. But in a court of law, and according to all of the religions that I've studied, it is called child abuse, aggravated assault. And if a child pushed you away from them and you fell down to your death, it is not murder, it is self-defense from all of the child abuse that grown person did to a child is what I was told, you know. So I'm not that smart, but as a witness of what I was told, you know. They say, you know, different spirits of different people, according to Bible stories, or bad spirits. There was a story of, you know, David. And in the story of David, it was, uh, you know, there was something about David being a murderer and that, according to a book, it was not self-defense. They say he wanted to have sex with the wife of a husband named Uriah. It was not self-defense. It was murder, is what the book says, you know. I would not want the spirit of a murderer, you know, when it is not self-defense. I would not want the spirit of a murderer when it is not self-defense, you know, it is murder. I would not want the spirit of a murderer a person who set up a person to be murdered, a person who planned a war in a plan of attack in a plan of murdering anyone, and it was not self-defense. Because if it was self-defense, it would be called self-defense, is what I was told, you know, those types of situations. They say a, 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 a husband, you know, married a wife and for no apparent reason other than David wanting to have sex with someone's wife and she was not the wife of David, David set up premeditated is what they say it's called, arranged and planned some kind of war and murder. And it was not self-defense. I would not want the spirit of a murderer because I would not want to be that way that he, according to the Bible in those books, I would not want those ways. I would not want the spirit of wanting to murder a person for their own wife. You know, a wife that is not my wife, but a wife that is someone else's wife. And, you know, it's, 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 it's not the kind of spirit I would want attached to me, you know. And it says the same thing. It was a story about Solomon and having 700 wives and 300 concubines, according to the Bible. I don't know if it was, you know, the same way now, you know, how people use names and identities and sometimes they say it's identity theft or 
that a person was framed or that the wrong person or a different person got blamed for something someone else did. That is why I, you know, was told to say the spirit or the soul or the character because if it's the wrong name or someone changed the names or if someone was not telling the truth about who the person was, then the way to say it is, I wouldn't want the soul and spirit of a person who had 700 wives. I wouldn't want the soul and the spirit of a person who had more than one wife because I would not want the soul and the spirit of a person who made a female, a girl, a woman, a lady feel like she's not good enough to be your first wife, your last wife, and your only wife. So me personally, I wouldn't want the soul and spirit of a person who made a wife feel like she is not good enough to be my first wife, my last wife, and my only wife. Because I would not want to make a wife feel bad, you know, about being a second wife, a third wife, or a 700th wife. And they say that sounds very bad. Because, you know, they say, if you were wife number 700 and all of the other wives were laughing at you saying that she's last, she's last, she wasn't good enough to be wife number one, she wasn't good enough to be wife number two, she wasn't good enough to be wife number three, she wasn't good enough to be wife number 100. She wasn't good enough to be wife number 200. She wasn't good enough to be wife number 300. And all of that and all of that, you would probably feel very bad. And that is why I would not want the soul and spirit of those traditions and practices of making any wife feel as if she is not good to be the first wife, the last wife, and the only wife of her marriage. The same way my wife is the first wife of my marriage, the last wife of my marriage, and my only wife of my marriage. Only one, you know. So I'm not sure about the name the same way, you know, because, you know, when people play games with names and identities and stuff like that, I'm not really that smart enough to figure it all out. But since it's about the character and the soul and the spirit and stuff like that and believing in God, you know, and since different people seem to have different types of gods that they call God. I was told to say, I believe my God, you know. And, you know, it's the same way as a lot of other people seem to believe, you know, that feminine energy comes from our mother in heaven and masculine energy comes from our father in heaven, you know, and that, you know, a mother and father, you know, the father is what, according to this language, is called a male, and the mother, you know, is what is, according to this language, is called a female, and they are married, a husband and a wife, and being married is evidence I believe the same type of way, you know, being married, you know, where the husband is a male, according to this language, and the wife is 
a female, you know, according to this language, you know, and when I was reading about children honoring our father and mother, I noticed in the Bible, the Bible does speak about our mother in heaven, you know, because it said, children, obey your parents and honor our father and mother. When it says honor our father and mother, I honor our father and mother because I have a marriage license which says April 30th, 2004 as a date listed, printed, you know, my marriage license has a print of April 30th, 2004 as evidence of me honoring my father and mother the same way with the husband, me being a male, according to my birth certificate in this language, and, you know, with the wife being a female, you know, the same way, according to the birth certificate in this language. And one wife and one husband, you know, the same way, our father and mother, according to the Bible, honoring our father and mother. Because it did not say honor our fathers with an S, more than one father, no. And it did not say honor our mothers with an S, more than one mother, no. It said honor our father, one father. And honor our mother, one mother. Honor our father and mother. And father and mother is where the idea if a M fam came from, father and mother, and giving honor for our father and mother by following the traditions of our God instead of following the traditions of those men or those women or those people according to those stories, who did stuff our God would not want them doing. You know, those people who had more than one husband, those people who had more than one wife. And what I mean by that, those people who planned and arranged and set it up to have more than one husband and actually did it, and they planned it. And it was because they set it up and arranged it and knowed what they was doing. And those people who set it up to have more than one wife, and they set it up and arranged it and planned it, and they knowed what they was doing. And it was their idea. And it was not a mistake when they did it. Those who intentionally did those types of whatever it is that it's called. I'm not that smart, so, you know. And I don't practice those ways, you know. I would always tell people, you know, I listen to a, a lot of different speakers and preachers and pastors and teachers, and I would always learn and would tell people, don't thank me, thank God. Don't thank me, thank God. If I gave you $100, don't thank me, thank God. If I gave you a million dollars, 
don't thank me. Thank God. And it would be like, why would you say that? They say it's not a real pastor if he doesn't say, don't thank me. Thank God. It's not a real preacher if they don't say, don't thank me. Thank God. It's not a real pastor if they don't say, don't thank me. Thank God. It's not a real preacher if they don't say, don't thank me, thank God. Because they say, if a person was a man or woman of God, is what they say. And the mission was leading people in the direction of God. You know. Then. They would not get mad if you said, don't thank me, thank God, because when you thank God for what someone does for you, God would be able to bless the person who did whatever they did for you, because when you thank God for what someone did for you, God would recognize the person who did whatever they did for you when you thank God. So a lot of times I don't say thank you. And a lot of times I do say thank you to people. But in order for you to understand my way, they say don't thank me, thank God. And sometimes I don't thank you because it's more important for you being blessed if I thank God, you know, if I thank God, you know, because I wouldn't want you missing your blessing for me thanking you when I could be helping you get your blessing by thanking God, you know, thanking God so that you get the recognition from God using me as a witness of thanks when I thank God for what you did for me when I thank God for what the people did for me. So, you know, I'm here in Macon, Georgia, and ever since October 6, 2006, I was told that I have a child that was born August 31st, 2004. And according to his birth certificate, he's... 18 years old, and I'm not sure what he is. It's been a long time. And, you know, I feel bad about the situation because there's a lot of, you know, bad feelings about what actually happened. I don't really know all the answers. And they say that it was also a child born July 18th, 2006. You know, and ever since October 6, 2006, according to the Family Court of Jefferson County of Birmingham, Alabama, the children were placed in an in need of supervision family court case. Ever since October 6 of 2006, and then a third child, the same exact date, October 6th, but two years later of, of, of 2008. So a court case basically started October 6th of 2006, and they said two children, a child born August 31st, 2004, and a child born July 18th, 2006, were in need of supervision because I took a child to the hospital, you know, you know, and I, I don't know if it's because being a mental health patient or 
being not that smart. I don't know why, you know, they were in need of supervision and have been gone so long. But, you know, more than 16 years later, you know, since 2006, more than 16 years later, you would feel kind of crazy or strange or bad or worried or, you know, stressed about what they say is your family, you know, according to a family court saying that it's my family, you know. And if this started in 2006, October 6th, and isn't it strange that the child was born on the exact same date of October 6, 2008? So that's three children, you know. And um, the child born October 6, 2008, they say, you know, according to her birth certificate, October 6, 2008, she's supposed to be 14. The child born July 18th, 2006. He, he's supposed to be 16. And the child was born August 31st, 2004. He's supposed to be 18, you know. I was talking to a guy in Macon, Georgia, one Sunday about it. And, you know, I learned something from talking to him. Since I believe in God, you know, it seems like what he was saying, you know, it seems like what he was saying is that with those types of situations, God knows best. God knows what's in our best interest, you know. As long as there's evidence, you know, of me studying all the religions, learning about our father and our mother, because in order to honor our father and mother, you would have to say there is a father and a mother. Because the feminine energy has to come from somewhere. So since we all know about the father, you would have to honor our mother, you know, because, well, you know, being married, having a wife, for there to be any girls at all, females had to come from somewhere. Feminine energy had to come from somewhere. Femininity had to come from somewhere. And they say it does. It comes from our mother. There's a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. Those are the words that they use in English. Now, in other languages, in other books, it may not be called a heavenly father or a heavenly mother, but it's about the soul and the spirit, you know, the right kind. So, you know, they say you have to be very careful because they say there's a place, you know, and, you know, idols. A name can be an idol. You would rather praise God than praise a name. You would rather praise God than praise a book. And they say, what does that mean? And they say, what does that mean? Since I'm not that smart, and I say that's what they say, being a witness. Well, what it means is, You would rather give all your love to God than give all your love to a book. You would rather give all your love to God than give all your love to a name. You would rather dedicate your life to God than dedicate your life to reading and studying a book. You would rather dedicate your life to God then dedicate your life to going to a place to where you would sing praises to a name. 
forever and ever and ever. You would rather dedicate your life to God than dedicate, you know, your life to an idol, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, they say, you know, you can read the Bible and eventually you get to the last page and you're done. It's over. You can read the Quran and eventually you get to the last page and you're done. It's over. You don't want to spend your whole life reading the same book over and over and over and over again until you've brainwashed yourself into knowing every single word in a book and not knowing God. You know, that type of stuff is what they say, you know. So I'm not that smart, but as a witness of what they say. Because... If at the end of your life, God judges you, knowing what a book says will not save you. Knowing how to sing praises forever and ever will not save you. Loving God and honoring God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, in all that you do is the first step. You know, loving God, our father and mother, you know, because our father is the first who loved our mother when our father made children of God from our heavenly mother. So when you are a follower of our God, you know, Loving God, our Father, means loving God, our Heavenly Mother. Because since our God has children, children of God, loving our Heavenly Father is what they call it in this language, means loving what our Heavenly Father loves. And, and certainly our Heavenly Father loves our Heavenly Mother because she's his wife. So I love our Heavenly Mother because I would not exist unless our Heavenly Father first loved our Heavenly Mother and is still loving her to this day. And I love her too. So you know, there's different stories about God in the Bible. And the video cut off the last time, you know. So before the video cuts off, I want to make sure that all of you who are part of the family of our God, you know, and anyone who can hear or see or have access to this video, according to the internet, it says the World Wide Web has access. So the world, you know, seems to have access. So it's available, you know. You know, um, I wouldn't want the soul or the spirit of whoever murdered someone or crucified someone on a cross, and it was not self-defense, because there was a story, and I'm not going to use any names because, you know, it's about the character, because what if they use the wrong name? So since there's not a lot of time to waste arguing over a name, Whoever it was that was a murderer that crucified someone, whether it was on a cross or a stake or a pole, whatever, I wouldn't want the soul and spirit of a murderer who murdered someone, you know, whether they thought it was the son of man or the son of God, when it was not self-defense, you know. And I wouldn't want the soul and spirit of a grown person who had sex with a child, you know, even if it was a long time ago. And I wouldn't want the soul and the spirit of a person, whether they were a woman or a man or whatever gender that they called themselves, who was a grown person who had sex with children or who set the people up and targeted people to be murdered just because they were mad or jealous or for no reason at all when it was not self-defense, you know? 
So don't thank me. Thank God, you know.